Let's look at VCAR Pro when you first open it up. Now my install here is a clean install, so with the exception I've opened some previous files, uh, everything should be the same. So this is what VCAR Pro looks like when you open it up. Now let's go through the process. So typically if I'm going to create a, a new job, I say create new file. And it brings this screen up. And let's talk about what this is. This is the job setup. Okay, this is where you define the material. Now, on, on this particular uh, sequence, I think I'm going to make a cabinet part because it's real easy to, easy to draw and, and you understand what the parts are. So let's say that out in the shop, I have a piece of material that's 30 by 40. Okay, it, and I would recommend that you keep your material size fairly close. All right, and it's three quarters thick. Okay, now, what? This selection here on Z has to do with the machine setup. When you set the machine up, you say, okay, I want this plane to be Z0, and, and so you're defining that plane. On here I'm saying, do I want the top of the material be Z0 or the bottom? Depends on what you're making. In my case, with a cabinet part, I would probably uh, put it on the bottom. All right? Then when you come down here, this is where the datum is. This is where X0, Y0. These things relate to the setup on the machine. So what I'm defining is the lower left corner of the blank is being X0, Y0, and that has to do with where it's positioned on the machine. Okay, we're going to do our drawing in inches. You can do either. And then you have a modeling resolution, and I typically select the highest one. And I use the default material, and I hit OK. So what this does, this, this brings me to the point where I'm actually ready to start drawing, but let's, let's look at some of the icons. Of course, these are the standard Windows icons on here where you open a new file and you open a folder and, and all that kind of stuff. These are actually views here. So this has to do with what, what kind of view you see, the zooms and, and, and those kinds of things. Okay, these are actually vectors or lines. So these are the different ways we draw lines, and we'll get into that a little bit later. And then there's things like how do you change the size, uh, how do you rotate things, how do you mirror things, all those kinds of functions we call transforms. And, and then we get into edit objects where we do all kinds of alterations to them. And, and so that's basically what you see here. Now down at the bottom, you'll see a tab that says modeling. Modeling has to do with 3D. So if I want to take a 3D surface and toolpath it, that's brought in at this level. Okay, this is a clip art is a directory on your computer of where you have clip art stored. Typically in the software, you'll download clip art. It comes with a whole lot of stuff and then layers, and we'll talk about layers at, at, at another session here, but layers have to do with uh, organizing material, so I can have some geometry on a certain layer, and I can turn layers on and off so my drawing's not so cluttered. So that's basically what you see on, on this screen here. All right now, if we come up here to the top tab, we have a, a, a 2D view and a 3D view, and we don't have anything in there yet, so we don't see it. Now, as we come across here, what we run into is a tab that says tool pass and let's click that and we'll, we'll pin it and, and this has to do with the tool path part where we actually apply programs. The first button that you see is set up and once again this brings in the information that we input over here earlier and you'll also see a 3D thing here and what this basically does if we're doing a 3D surface this is how we figure out in the material where it's going to be positioned. It's at the bottom, the top, and the middle. That's what that is. These are basically settings here of how far a tool comes up before it traverses over. And I'm going to set this while I'm looking at it. I'm going to say the clearance is going to be a half inch, but I'm going to wrap it down to 0.2. And then these have to do with the home positions. Uh, typically on most of our post processors, we don't use this. We, use a, we have a new system at ShopSaver that we do to tell the machine where to park at the end of the program, so we pretty much ignore that. And then what you see are the different types of toolpaths. So here's a toolpath profile, here's one called pocket, here's one called drilling, and so forth. So that's what all these are. These are approaches that you use to, for toolpaths. So, you know, you have one toolpath where you cut a part out. You have one toolpath where you pocket. You have one toolpath where you do 3D surface. That kind of stuff. So that's what toolpaths are. And the, the, here's some other icons that basically uh, recalculate, delete, those kinds of things, and we'll look at that later. And then down here at the bottom, these, these uh, are icons that you use to output. Okay, now, when we create tool pass, we'll actually see those sh show up here, so they'll be displayed down here. Now let's look at how we actually create drawings.
I like to illustrate the drawing with the part that most people would recognize that has a lot of different op operations in it for, for alignment. And, and we're going to start with a cabinet end panel. And uh, our blank we started with earlier is 30 by 40 by 3 quarters thick, so that's some, certainly large enough to make that panel out of. Well, so how do you start the drawing? Well, what is an end panel? It's a rectangle, so I guess I probably need to start drawing a rectangle. So I come over to this icon under Create Vectors, and I just sketch a rectangle. But I don't know how, what size it is. Actually, I do. But to get it to the correct size, I'm going to type in 24 by 34 and a half. All right, I hit Apply. And now that rectangle is sized. Okay. But my problem is it doesn't line up right. So how do I get it to line up? Well, that's where we get into the Line Objects tools. The ones you see right here under white reference the material itself. So if I, if I highlight this like that and I hit that one, it centers it on the blank. Now, before we actually machine it, we'll probably reposition it. But at this point right now, let's not worry about that. Now, if you notice also, when I selected that geometry, it turned magenta. When I click it again, all of a sudden it gets these handles. So I can move it around. Now, in our case, we don't want to do it. You can also stretch it. So I think we don't want to do that. So let's go Control Z, Control Z. So we're back centered. All right, if you want to verify what size that is, if you select it, go to this icon, and it'll tell you what size it is. So it's 24 by 34 and a half, right? And so we're centered. So that looks pretty good. So now, what's our next feature? Well, our cabinet has a toe kick. So we need to draw a toe kick. Well, a typical toe kick is probably going to be three by four. Well, let's start with a rectangle. So let's sketch a rectangle and let's make it three by four. Okay, and there's our rectangle. Now what I need to do is move this rectangle from here to here. Okay, so that's what you use these buttons here. The ones that are blue require two inputs. So I'm going to select that rectangle. I'm going to hold the shift key down and select the outside. And I'm going to tell it align it to that and align it to that. So those are alignment tools, so that, that made it that easy. Okay, now my problem is I have two rectangles. Well, I don't really want a rec two rectangles. I want, to, I want one of them notched out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a tool that allows me to subtract it. So I'm going to say from this shape, hold the Shift key down, I want to remove that. And I hit the little Pac-Man icon, and it does it. So what that was a subtraction. It subtract the smallest rectangle from the largest, and that gave us our toe kick. So that's how that's how I do that. There's two or three ways to draw that, but that's the easiest way. Okay? So that looks pretty good. Now what else do we need now? All right. Think about a cabinet typically is going to have some kind of joinery in it. And normally we have uh, stretchers at the top. So let's let's think about that. What we really want to do is we want to create a dado that the stretcher fits into that's about a quarter inch deep. So a dado is going to be a rectangle. So I come over here, select my rectangle, and I'll just sketch it on here, and I'll enter in the size. Okay, it's going to be 4 inches, and it's going to be 0.75 thick, because that's our material thickness. All right. Once again, uh, I'm going to select that, and then hold the shift key down and select the outside, and I'm going to say line it up at the top and the front. And now my stretcher is positioned. So I have a stretcher here. Now, I also want a stretcher down here at the about six inches below that. So I'm going to, this time I'm going to say, right click and say copy, and I'm going to paste. And immediately you see something a little different. It, you see that instead of spaces between the magenta dashes, there's a line underneath it. So what that tells you is that there's a lot of geometry stacked on each other. Okay, so one of them selected, and I want to move it. All right. Now we looked at how you resize things. There's an icon that lets us move. And so what we want, since we know where it's at, I say I want to move it relative to where it is in Y minus 6. And that's what position's at. So now that stretcher is located. So that becomes a drawer stretcher, by the way. Okay. In my cabinet, I also want a stretcher back here. So let's paste another one so it's on top. And this time, I want to uh, select this. And I want to move it all the way back. All right, so that aligns it in the back. But now I need to move it forward because I want to allow for the back. So once again, I'll go to this icon. I'll say move it relative to where it is, one inch. 
and now that's positioned. So now I have all my stretchers. So the top stretchers and the drawer stretchers are there. Okay, the next thing I need in there is I actually need, uh, I need a bottom. So a bottom is a rectangle. Now, there's, once again, there's a number of ways to do that. I'll show you what I think is the simplest way. I'm gonna paste again. And now I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna grab that center and drag it down here where it's in the ballpark. Okay, then we'll zoom in here. Now what I wanna do is I wanna move this corner to right here. And if you watch, it will snap into that corner. So I'm gonna slowly move into it and you'll see it. There it snapped into place, okay? Now I've just got one problem, it's the wrong size. So this gets into, okay, well how do we resize geometry? Well, it's simple, it's selected, so I don't really have to select anything. I come back over here to our resize function, okay? Now, right now it's four inches by uh, 0.75. Well, for one thing, I wanna unclick this link because I don't want it scaling it. And you see this area up here, it says anchor. Well, right now it's anchored in the center, but I want to anchor it on that corner. That's this corner down here because then it's not going to move. Then all I do is type in the width, 24, and that dado's size. So now that dado's done. The reason I like this part is because it's got a lot of neat stuff like that that you can look at. Okay, what else do we need? Well, we'll probably have a groove in the back. And so let's take a look at that. So I, once again, I'll probably sketch a, sketch a groove. And... Um, We'll make that, uh, let's make that about uh, 0.5. Actually, let's make it 0.75, so we'd make it out of the same part. And I'm not sure what the height is. Let's just put 24, 25. All right, we'll close that. Okay, I'm gonna line it to the top and to the back. And then we're gonna move it, we're actually gonna move it inward a quarter inch just like we did before, relative 0.25. Okay, now here's my problem. I don't know what the length is, so I'm gonna show you another tool here. So what I need to know is how long is it from this corner to down here? So there's actually a tool that allows us to do that. So I'm gonna measure that to that. And it says it's 29.75. Okay, so now that I know that, I click this and we'll resize it, we'll anchor that top, and we want this to be uh, 29.75, and there it is. So that's a groove for the back. So now that's pretty much all that type of geometry that we need. Now let's talk about holes. Our cabinet end panel is gonna have adjustable shelf holes, so let's draw those. Okay, well, what's a hole? Well, it's gonna be uh, five millimeters, so let's start with a circle. Just put a circle there, and the diameter of that circle is gonna be five millimeters, which happens to be uh, 0.197. All right, we'll close that. All right, so there's our, there's our hole, all right? Now, but you think about, in a cabinet, I have a set of holes, I have adjustable shelf holes. There's typically five holes and two rows of them, so now we're gonna use another function called a ray. And that's what this icon down here is. Okay, so here's what it says. How many rows do I want? Rows are horizontal. I want five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, how many columns do I want? I want two columns. It'll be one here and one here. Okay, uh, I want those offsets. So I want in X, I want that offset 12 inches. And in Y, I want it offset 32 millimeters. So let me show you another little neat function here. Now I happen to know what 32 millimeters is, but let me show you this. If I go to 32 divide by 25.4 and hit the equal sign, it does a calculation for me. So that's a nice little function. It really simplifies things so, so you can uh, calculate. I hit copy and there's two rows. And now you notice they're grouped together. One, one of the functions was, was grouping. So they're grouped together. Now, so that, think about when they're grouped, they're one object. So I'm moving that one object around. And all I have to do is position that, that one object. Now let's look at a couple ways to do that. For one thing, I can select that, and I could select the very back edge here. Whoops. Look at that, we select the very back edge. And I'm gonna say, align that to the back. And then I'm gonna select that and say, move it three inches forward. And we'll just say relative. 
So that gets the front to back position correct. But now I still, I really want it centered in this opening. So we're going to look at a different tool here. First off, I'm just going to create a construction line. So we'll just draw a line here. Make sure it snaps in. Now, we're going to use another little function here. We're going to trim it, and we're going to use a scissor tool. Okay, that works. Do the same thing here. A construction line is just something we put in there uh, just for reference. So now what I want to do is I want to take those, hold the shift key down, select my construction line, and I want it centered that way. Right, so what that did was that centered that in the opening, and I just get rid of my construction line, and there's my drawing. So what we'll do now, now that we have the drawing done, before we go to tool pathing, first I'm going to ungroup those so that they become individual entities. So we'll do that over here. Okay, now when I select one, I can select them one at a time. And now let's group the whole thing. We select all of them. We group that together. So now this acts as one object. So that, that maintains the alignment. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, uh, let's center this. And then what I want to do is I, I want to actually move it. So I'm going to go to the Move Selected Objects. I'm going to pick an absolute. I'm going to pick this corner so this becomes an anchor right down here. And I want it to be 0.25, 0.25, 0.25. Now that's actually in the position that I would cut this part out, you see? So it's a quarter inch from the material, so if I've got bad edges on here, those get cut away. All right, so now we've got our part drawn. Now you see how easy it is to draw geometry. Now let's go to the next step and let's actually go into the tool pathing part of this. Okay, before we can actually create our tool pass, we really need to create the tools inside the software. So let's do that. I go to tool paths and I go to tool database. Now what you see here are the default tools that were installed uh, by VCAR Pro. And, and I really don't bother those. I'll leave those in place. I prefer to, to create my own tool setups. So what I'm going to do first is create a new group and I'm going to name that group pretty much my machine. And I'm going to do it in all caps. So it's going to be Shop Saber. Pro 408. Now why do I do that? Well I want to keep that separate because I might have multiple setups. I might have a setup that's got plastic tools. I might have a setup that's got cabinet tools. I might have a setup for aluminum. So I like to separate those. I might also have more than one machine and, and, and uh, maybe I have different feeds and speeds based on the horsepower. So I prefer to do it that way. So that creates my, there's my first group. We'll go back over here and grab that again. So there's this new group I created. Now let's talk about where we put the machine tools. Okay, first off, you, there's an arbitrary way to do this. Uh, you can do it any way you want. Historically what I've always done is I've always put tools in the order that I thought I would use them. My machine has a five position tool changer so I'm going to install five tools. Okay, and number one is going to be the drill because I normally do that first. So let's create a drill. So let's say new and we'll go drill. Okay, I'm going to define what it is. I'm going to say it's five millimeter drill. You know, so I put that in all caps. So I know when I look at the tool database, the ones that are in all caps are the tools I created. Those are typically the ones I use. Okay, the diameter of the drill is five millimeters, 0.197, included angles 180. The depth per pass, I'll probably go a half inch. Now what that means is if the hole's deeper than that, it'll do it in two passes. Spindle speed 8,000 is probably right. I probably drilled that at 150. And it's tool number. Now this, this tool number is really, really critical if you have a tool changer because basically I'm telling the software in tool position one on that machine there's a drill. So that's really critical if you have an ATC machine. And I'll hit apply and it shows up on my list. All right. Let's do another one. So the second tool I typically use would be a down shear router bit to do data. So it's an end mill type tool. Okay, so let's call it a quarter down shear. Right, and whoops, need to spell that correctly. Quarter down shear. We needed to find the diameter, and you'll find uh, that they're not really a quarter, it's probably 248. The shaft is a quarter, so by the time they actually do the grinding and stuff, it's probably a little less than that. 
depth for passing, woodworking, a good rule of thumb is two times the tool diameter. So if it's a quarter inch bit, I can go a half inch deep. And here's what that does. If I'm cutting an, an operation deeper than that, it just does it more passes. That's what controls that. Step over is interesting also. If I'm doing a pocket, here's what step over means. Step over means how far the tool moves over to do the next pass. And I usually go 50% of the tool diameter. Sometimes you can go more than that, but, but you don't have to. Spindle RPMs will say 18,000. And we'll probably cut that at 400 inches a minute. And I'm going to put that in tool position two and hit apply. So there's my second tool. So the first tool in the tool changer on the machine is a drill, the second's a down shear. Now, in some instances, I might add another down shear uh, for half inch or three eighths, but in our case, we're not going to. In our case, our third tool is going to be what we're going to cut the part out with. So that's going to be another new tool, and it'll be an end mill, which is a router bit, and we're going to name it, uh, let's call it three eighths compression. Whoops. There we go, 3 eighths compression. The diameter is probably going to be 373. Three. All right, depth per pass, I can probably go 0 0.8. <clears throat> now, technically, um, whoops, 0 0.3, I think it's 0 0.37, 0 0.373. Okay, Te technically, you can go twice the diameter. You can fudge a little bit on that, so I'm going to say 0 0.8, and the reason is I might end up with melamine material that's 0.78 or something like that. And I want to make sure that all gets cut in one pass. Okay, RPMs, that's okay. I'm probably going to speed this up to 600. And I'm going to put it in tool number three. And we'll hit okay. So there's our, there's our basic tools for the cabinet itself. All right, so I've got to drill that and compression. Okay, I'll put a couple more bits in. Now, for one thing, I think I'll put a V-bit in there because we'll probably use that. Now, a V-bit's an exception. Here's a 90 degree V-bit. I'm going to copy that. Then I'm going to drag it up to my tools. And the reason I did that is because there's a whole lot of settings. And so, so I'm going to take the default settings that are already filled out from VCAR Pro because I know they work. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to just rename it and I'm going to call it 90 degree or V-bit 90, V-bit 90, V-bit 90. Okay. <clears throat> that way uh, I've got that set. And, and the final tool I'll probably put in there will be, uh, I'll probably put a fly cutter. So let's accept that. Whoops. Now let's go back and let's add our fly cutter. And so, new fly cutter is an uh, end mill. And I'll just call it one and a half fly cutter. All right. Whoops. One and a half. There we go. And we'll define the diameter, and it, we'll just call it 1.5. Now, fly cutter, we want to be careful how deep we cut. So let's say that we cut it at 0.1, because that's a big tool. And all we're using is to, is to fly cut the table, so 0.1 is deep enough. Step over 50. Uh, the speed on that tool is probably 14,000. And we're probably OK on that speed. And it's going to be in position number 5. So now we've created the actual tool. So now the software knows where the tools are in the machine. So now let's approach putting tool paths actually on our geometry. We're almost ready to start applying tool paths, but we need to do one thing beforehand, and that is ungroup the geometry. If you recall, when we created this drawing, we grouped everything together and positioned it on the blank. So we need to ungroup it. So all we do is click anywhere on it. It selects everything, and we hit the ungroup button. And now these are back to individual pieces of geometry. So we're ready. Now we're ready to tool path. All right. So the next question is, what order do we do things? Well, it's pretty arbitrary. I typically uh, do the non-through stuff. So it's going to be the drilling and the, and the dados followed by the outside parts. Now, so when I create tool paths, I do it in that order. Now, you can change that order later. So if you change your mind on the order of things, that's no problem. So here's where I'd start. I window around the holes, I select the drilling tool path icon, and let's set the depth of those holes at 0.4, and we're going to select a 5 millimeter drill. Okay, there's that, and we'll hit apply. And uh, pretty much on drilling, the only other thing I need to do is let's name this, and let's call, let's call this 5 
MM, whoops, let's not put the space in it, MM drill. And we'll hit calculate and see what happens. Okay, now if you notice it switched to the 3D mode, we'll actually look at it this way. What you see now are the toolpaths. So the red lines represent rapid moves above the material, and the green lines are the actual toolpaths. And if I hit, uh, let's slow it down, and if I hit uh, preview selected toolpath, that's what happens on the machine. So if we ran that toolpath right now on the blank, we would get our holes. Okay? That's how that works. All right, so, so we really build a program as we go. Okay, the next thing I typically do is cut dado. So let's cut, let's select the dados that are the same depth. All right, so that's going to be the stretchers. And I'm going to hold the shift key down to do a multiple selection. All right, and then I'm going to come over here where it says pocket tool pad. The cut depth of those pockets is going to be 0 0.25. I'm going to use a quarter down shear. All right, that looks good. Uh, and I'm going to do a conventional cut, and I'm probably going to I'm going to have it ramp in. That, it cuts its way in. It's probably a little better on the tool. And let's call this dados, D A D O E S, and let's hit calculate. And you see the tool pass on here, and then let's simulate it. So now we put our two tool paths together. Now when we create that program, we've got our holes drilled and we've got the the dado stud. Okay. So that's looking good. Now let's go back to the 2D view. Now, I'm kind of lazy, so what I really want to do is I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the same tool paths for this groove, except I'm going to change the depth. So what I think I'll do is I think I'll just copy this, open it up, deselect the geometry, and select the, the groove in the back. Okay, I'm going to change the depth, 0.375. I put the back in after the cabinets assembled, so I like those a little deeper. Uh, everything stays the same, and I'm going to call those a grooves. So groove, there's only one group, we'll call it grooves, and then we'll hit calculate. And now that generates that tool path. So that completes all the tool paths that don't cut the parts out. So we're looking pretty good there. All right? Now the next thing we need to do is actually cut the outside. So that's this piece of geometry. That's going to be a profile. So we hit profile tool path. We're going to cut through the material plus a little bit, plus ten thousandths. Okay, we're going to use a 3 8 compression bit. That's already set. We're going to cut on the outside on a profile. A profile can be on the outside, inside, or on the line. And we're going to use a conventional cut because the part's plywood. Uh, the only thing else I change, I put a lead in. I'm going to have it add a lead. And I'm going to have it uh, uh, ramp in. And I'm going to have it to ramp in on the lead in. It's just easier on the tool. And let's just name it. Let's call it outside. Hit that. Now we see this warning. This is there's no problem here. This is just telling us our tool is going through the material. All right, that's good. And we run the simulation, and that's what it looks like. And what's neat is you can double click that, and you can, there's your part. So there's your part in VCar Pro. All right. And I'd probably save my drawing at this point. Now we'll come back over here. Now we're ready to actually output code. You can really think there's, there's, there's three distinct processes in this, and the first was creating the geometry, then applying the tool pass, and the final is outputting to the machine. So let's do that. So what I'm going to do next is click on this icon, right, and I'm going to select the post processor. Now here's what the post processor, it's the file that makes the uh, code match the machine, what the machine's looking for. So you can have different machines and they have different post processor requirements. So you select the one that's correct for your machine. I would recommend that you get it from us because sometimes our post processors are the most current. Sometimes we change things uh, around and, and our post will always reflect that. Okay, so here's the post and I'm going to click all the tool paths. So it's here, they show up here. So these are the tool paths that are going to be output. And I hit save tool path and now I name the program. So it's going to be a right end. So we'll save that. So now that program goes to the machine, and when I run it, that's the part I get. So it's, it's a really, really nice system. Now, let's go back over here, and let's look at something. You know, this is a cabinet end panel. Now, by the way, it's a right end because when you face it, it's to your right. When you face the cabinet, it's to your right. You know, most cabinets need a left also. Let me show you something that's really neat about VCAR Pro. What I'm going to do first is uh, we're going to save this once again. And then we're going to save it as another name. So I'm going to say save as, and this time instead of a right end, it's going to be a left end. So we'll just change that. 
So it's going to be a left end, so that's saved. Now I want to show you a neat feature here. We're going to mirror this. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all of it. We're going to go over here to the mirror button, and I'm just going to say flip horizontal. And let's undo that. Create a mirrored copy. I want to flip horizontal and delete the, whoops. And there it is. Now, if you look at, look at, here's how you can tell it, your toe kick's on the front. Okay, so now, guess what? All I have to do is say recalculate tool paths, and it just created the other side. Let's look at simulation. Okay, we'll reset that, and we'll preview all tool paths. There's our left end. So VCAR Pro is smart enough to actually mirror all that. So now I actually made one end and just mirrored it, and now I have both uh, end panels for my cabinet. So all I have to do is go over here and output the code, and we'll select all those, and we'll call it left end. And now I have a program all ready to go on the machine to create the left end. It's that easy. So VCAR Pro is really, really powerful. Okay, now we've looked at basically the, the fundamentals of, of how the software is set up in the drawing and, and actually tool path it. Now let's look at another neat, neat function called vCarving. You know, one of the neatest things you can do with your ShopSaber CNC and vCar Pro is a process called 3D engraving, or some people call it vCarving. And it's used to make signs, and it's really easy, and it doesn't take a lot of machine time. Let me show you how I would do one of these. What you see on the screen, here's a blank. I've defined as 30 by 20, and it's 3 quarter inch thick material. Now, the first thing I need to do is get the geometry. In our case, we're, gonna, we're actually going to use text, and vCar Pro has all that built in. So it has all the fonts that your computer has. All right, so I'm going to use Times New Roman. I'm actually going to type Saber Nation. So that's what I want to use. Okay, I'm going to make it bold. I'm going to center it and two inches tall. Let's see what we get. Should be able to click that and get it out towards the middle. Okay, that's, that size is okay. And now I'm going to use this alignment tool to align it to the center of the bike. So that's what I'm going to start with, okay? Now we're going to look at a couple different things to do. Now the simplest thing I could do is take a V-bit and just go down the center of the line. So let's see what effect that creates. You start out with, it's a profile, I select the tool, and let's say that we're going to go 30,000 steep, 0 0.03. We're going to cut on the line, so all I have to do is select it and hit calculate. Okay, and here's what it's going to look like. So the tool is just going to follow those lines, it's going to create that. All right? Well, let's say, well that's okay, but I'd like for it to stand out a little bit more, so what I can do is open that back up and have it cut a little deeper, so let's go 60 thousandths. We'll go back and calculate it, and we'll reset our preview, and we'll do it again. And so now it's the same effect, it's just deeper, right? So that's one thing you could do, and sometimes when you make a sign, it's a combination of several strategies. Okay, so we reset our preview, get back to this, and we'll get rid of that toolpath, okay? The next thing I want to do is actually what's called 3D engraving. Now basically what that means is I take a V-bit, and there's a certain angle, the one we're using is a 90 degree, so the depth of cut is actually a function of how wide the spacing is. Here, let me show you how that works. You go to V-carve, okay, we don't want a flat depth, I want a 90 degree bit that we set up earlier, so that's correct. And all I do is select the geometry and say calculate. Here's what it looks like. Now you'll notice that you've got some little feet up here. All right, let's see what that does. So if I preview it, Now if you look real close, you see how the bit goes down and then it climbs out of the corners. And, here, and so if we, let's go back and look at the tool pass themselves. So we'll reset the preview and just look at the tool. And now you see these are little angles where the bit's climbing up the corners. That's a really, really, really nice effect and that's called 3D engraving. All right. And once again, that's, that's, that's a very, very popular method to make signs. But let's do something else here. Let's take our geometry and let's add another component here. So let's start with, uh, let's put an oval in there. We'll just eyeball it. All right, I'm happy with that. 
we'll close that. Now I'm going to take that one and also center it, so therefore it has to be centered with this. Now I'm going to go back to my V-Carve toolpath. I'm going to add this selection. This time I'm going to click Flat Depth, because in this area out here I actually want it to be uh, um, a certain depth. And so let's say we make it an eighth of an inch. And also I'm going to use a second tool. I'm going to use this quarter inch down shear to clean that out. We'll generate the tool path. And now you'll see we have two tool paths. All right, so let's turn this off. Let's reset our preview. Okay, the first tool path that says pocket, so it's going to be that straight bit. So let's see what it does. So it flattens that area out. If you look up close. Okay, then a second tool path is the V bit and it cleans it up, and watch this. So now all of a sudden, th those become what are called prismatic letters, and all of a sudden those are raised out. So there's a tremendous number of, uh, of things you can do with this, and it has a great look. Now let's say in this one I wanted it to stand out a little bit more. What I'd probably do is, uh, actually let's go back and let's reset our tool path, and let's just double click this, and I'm gonna change one setting, I'm gonna make this Let's just say 3 slash 16 equal, and it'll calculate it for us, and then we recalculate the tool path. Okay, we'll turn those off. The first thing we want to do is flat tool, and then we'll clean it up with a B bit. And that's how it looks. So now you see it has a deeper effect here. So. So that's 3D engraving, and there's lots and lots of stuff you can do with it, but it, it's a really, really easy way to make nice stuff. And, and one of the first things people do uh, with their new CNC is to make a sign. <laughs>
scrap. And it's that easy. <clears throat> so it's really it's it's almost magic when you first see it. Now, let's take this nesting concept and let's apply it to something you might be familiar with. I've got a drawing already ready for us, so let's open this and file open. Uh, it's a T-Rex. So this is a, <clears throat> these are the parts for a Tyrannosaurus Rex that you see all the time. We, we created this probably 20 years ago, and it was, it was actually based on a kid's toy, but here's a real world application. So I want to make this dinosaur and I'm going to cut it out of wood, and my material is 30 by 30, so how do I do that? It's really, really simple. First thing I do is I come down here to nesting, all right? Uh, this one I'm going to use, I'll probably use a half inch or a quarter inch bit on that because it's not as thick of material. And all I have to really do is just select those. I need a quantity of one and tell it to preview. And there they are. Then it's just a matter of putting a tool pass on the individual parts. So when you cut that out, you get a nest of those, and you cut it, and you put it together, and it's that little dinosaur that stands up that you see all the time. So, so that's, that's a real-world application of nesting. So nesting is an unbelievably powerful tool that's all part of CNC routing and VCAR Pro, and it's unbelievably easy to do. In this video, I wanted to show you how easy it is to make things on a CNC router using VCAR Pro. And I picked some of my favorite operations. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.